Sakshi, welcome on Yorpedia. Yeah, hi. Okay, so Sakshi, uh, I'm going to interact with you. And uh, I would like to know a couple of things from you. You are presently uh, working in US and uh, you have done your master's from there. And you are a bio student. You have done your uh, master's in bioscience, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But my master's was from Jaipur. And right now I'm at India itself in Bangalore. Okay, so uh, your uh, master's you have done from Jaipur. And yes. uh, what you've done, uh, your uh, PhD you've done later on, right? No, I have applied for my PhD as of now. So okay. I got admit from University of South Florida. Okay. okay. So, okay. Yeah. And you're working in Bangalore right now? Yeah, I'm working in Bangalore. Okay. okay. So I correct myself. Uh, Sakshi, I would like to interact with you and know about all these things. Uh, so yeah. can can we start with your brief uh, academic uh, background in, in, in which we want to know uh, from where you've done your graduation and uh, what was the graduation domain? And then yeah. master's, as you said, you've done from Jaipur. So master's in yeah, which yeah. specialization? And yeah. uh, after master's, uh, now you're doing job. So after master's, did you join job immediately or yeah. there was some kind of gap? So those kind of details we want to know. Yeah. So basically, I pursued my bachelor's from KRG College, uh, which is a part mm -hmm. of Jivaji University from Gwalior mm -hmm. itself. So my okay. native is Gwalior. So okay. after that, I pursued my master's in bioscience from mm -hmm. Vanastali Vidya Peet. There I was a gold medalist. Uh, mm -hmm. At that time, I decided to go for a second master's in immunology. So uh, my research interest was particularly in immunology uh, since my master's itself. So mm -hmm. uh, that time I applied for, uh, to a couple of universities, especially in UK. I mm -hmm. accepted my offer from University of Manchester back then, uh, but mm -hmm. I did not go because of COVID. So okay. in 2021, I finished my master's from Vanasili itself. And mm -hmm. after that, I decided to go for a couple of internships mm -hmm. to get hands-on experience as during COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, get, getting research experience was not possible, especially mm -hmm. in life sciences sector. Mm -hmm. So after uh, doing some internships in uh, multiple research domains like nanotechnology, microbiology, molecular biology, etc. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to join Sinjin. Uh, Sinjin mm -hmm. is basically India's largest pharma-based client research organization and also mm -hmm. Asia's second largest. So okay. right now, uh, over here at Sinjin, I'm uh, working for around 1.5 years as of now. Okay. And mm -hmm. my previous project was on cancer biology. Right now, I'm working on uh, insulin-based assays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So Sakshi, it looks like you're doing a very good job in a very good company, yeah. as you mentioned. So, yeah. so what, what was the need? You know, what need you were feeling to go for higher education and PhD mm -hmm. and all? And that too from uh, abroad. Yeah. So during my bachelor's itself, I wanted to go abroad for my master's. But as I said that uh, due to COVID, it was not possible for me. So mm -hmm. after my master's, I decided that uh, I should go directly for a PhD and not the second master's. So okay. uh, I got some research experience first because in life sciences, um, getting research experience is very important if you want to go into good universities. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's why. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if if I talk about biology students, those who have yeah. having background of bio, uh, uh, I have seen a lot of uh, inclination among these students for pursuing higher educational courses, whether these yeah. are master's courses or doctorate courses. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you can you tell me, Sakshi, what are the uh, good research areas uh, for bio students in mm -hmm. which they can pursue their research for very good career thereafter? You mentioned about yeah. cancer biology, which I could uh, yeah. Uh, listen. Yeah. So what are the other uh, you know research areas in which they can aspire to go for higher education? Okay, uh, so first of all, I feel that PhD is very important. Before coming into research areas, I would like to tell that uh, mm -hmm. even if you're working in industry, uh, during that time also PhD is important because mm -hmm. uh, with uh, no prior experience in industry, you'll join directly as a a research associate and after mm -hmm. that it will take you around two years to get promoted to a senior research associate then as associate mm -hmm. scientist next two years and so on uh, mm -hmm. uh, however if you have pursued phd already then you can join directly as a principal investigator which mm -hmm. is like four to five positions higher than mm -hmm. if you join directly as a fresher or after your master's mm -hmm. so uh, even if you're working in industry or academy if you want to become a professor phd is a must in life sciences so okay. that is why phd as i said uh, i wanted to do it uh, after that uh, talking about research areas i would say immunology is a highly growing field right now because uh, industries are hiring a lot of immunologists even my company is uh, paying a lot of uh, uh, paying a lot of attention to this uh, sector 
Uh, also, if I talk about other research areas, neuroscience is uh, really nice. Uh, molecular biology is also nice. Cell biology and these areas are particularly high, growing areas in my field. Wonderful. So, yeah. So, so you just mentioned that uh, you know, many students want to go for PhD and they should go for PhD because mm -hmm. that gives some kind of advantage in their career, uh, yes. which they want to pursue yes. later on. Are you talking mm -hmm. about Indian market, Indian ecosystem, or are you talking about a global ecosystem? Because what we know in India is like, you know, uh, students uh, do not want to go for PhD, thinking that PhD after PhD, the only opportunity they will get is in the academics or teaching and uh, not in the industry. So that may not provide them very good career, uh, you know, after PhD. So when you're saying, okay, PhD is very important and it is must yes. for having very good career. Yes. Uh, what yes. do you mean by that? Is it India yeah. for India or abroad? So India as well. So I just, as I just said that I have worked in academia and right now I'm working in industry. So over, after coming over here, there were uh, a lot of master students who joined, uh, uh, some of them were IITNs as well, and they joined mm -hmm. directly after their college. Uh, mm -hmm. But then their growth was really very slow. However, okay. there were people who did their masters and went uh, to pursue PhD abroad did their okay. postdocs as well and then joined the industry. So they are, at, they are directly at uh, good positions over here. So you will take around 11 to, to 11 to 13 years to get into that position. And after PhD, you can join, get that position directly. So that is why I feel that a PhD is very important for industry as well. So yeah. Okay, Sakshi, now uh, coming to uh, your selection in a PhD position abroad, can you please tell us which university you have got and uh, what is the area, a specialization area in which you are going and what were the credentials required to get admit in that university? Okay, so first of all, I didn't write GRE. The only exam that I gave was IELTS and my score was eight bands. Uh, after IELTS, uh, I focus a lot on, on my CV. I already have five publications in hand. And other than that, my uh, credentials, uh, as of my bachelor's, I was a third rank holder. In my master's, I was having 9.13 CGP and there I was a gold medalist again. So I guess they paid a lot of attention on that whenever I gave an interview. So they saw my credentials and they were impressed with that. Also, uh, they were quite impressed with my publications. So I again feel that if you're having a publications, then that is a very much plus point. Uh, mm -hmm. into life sciences field. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think publications, uh, having good credentials as in your bachelor's and master's marks are mm -hmm. very important. Other than that, uh, overall, the research experience that we are having, even mm -hmm. if the marks are low, but if mm -hmm. we are having good research experience, especially in the field that we are applying for, mm -hmm. that is very important. However, one thing that I would like to mention, I got my PhD, I accepted my offer from University of South Florida as of now in PhD in medical sciences. My concentration will be allergy, immunity and infectious diseases over there. So uh, my I had no prior experience in immunology. Till now also I'm not having experience in immunology, but I'm having a vast experience in other backgrounds. So of life sciences. So again, I would say that people say that you need a lot of experience in immunology, then only you will get it. Then that is not required. Uh, I mean, still there, if you are having experiences in other fields also, that is also sufficient for getting a PhD. But research experience is important overall. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sachi, uh, I'm interacting with you and uh, I, I can see that uh, you have a vast experience also in your domain. You have worked yeah. in academia, you have work, you are working mm -hmm. in industry, you have your research papers and you, mm -hmm. have, uh, uh, you have done your master's also. The other day I was interacting with one candidate in uh, uh, biomedical only and she was final year student, undergraduate mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, understandable she is not having research papers and all and not okay. that uh, experience. She also mm -hmm. got a, a selection in one of the very good universities for direct PhD program. Mm -hmm. okay. I would like to ask you like uh, for the students who are under in under graduation and they are in their mm -hmm. third year, final year. And mm -hmm. if they're planning to go for direct PhD immediately after their graduation, mm -hmm. what kind of credentials uh, they should have and what, where they should focus? Because certain things will come with pass of time only. I mean, the research papers, publish, publishing may be easier once you do master's, mm -hmm. but in undergraduation, it may not be that easy, right? So mm -hmm. undergraduate uh, student, where he or she should focus so that he also uh, starts exploring and uh, gets good opportunities. Okay, so during undergraduation, uh, we have this opportunity of doing our thesis. So, uh, for instance, if somebody is interested in cell biology, particularly in the field of cancer, or somebody is interested in biochemistry, so they can uh, uh, try to do their dissertations in these areas. Uh, I would like to suggest these students that uh, try to look for uh, institutes 
who, whose professors are proficient in these uh, sectors. For instance, IISC, IITs, they can go for internships over there and they can start applying beforehand um, their uh, final year. So mm -hmm. uh, if they get yes. research uh, experience in these areas, especially if they do their internship, then also they can uh, get their PhD in that. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so that is a very good point actually to do internship that too from some research organization, yes. which eventually yes. helps them to get into the yes. uh, good research opportunity. Uh, how, how can a student, uh, you know, make his or her CV very effective for uh, eventually impressing the professor and getting the selection? What should be reflected on CV? First thing is their marks. So okay. if we are, uh, uh, okay, so the first thing that we uh, put in our CV is our bachelor's is from business yeah. university and so are our marks. So if, uh, uh, since they have already got into a university, they cannot uh, really change it. However, they can be good in their studies and improve it. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I got uh, around 68% in my bachelor's, but there mm -hmm. I uh, got a recommendation letter from my professor stating that I was a third rank holder. So that sufficed it. So, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you say good CGPA, what is what what is that uh, definition of good CGPA, Sakshi? I mean, it should be like uh, seven plus CGPA or seventy percent plus. What what do you mean by that? Okay, so some it depends upon the university. First of all, some universities are accepting seventy percent plus. They say. Uh, mm -hmm. But then uh, I think good credentials, maybe something above 8 CGP or above 80 percent is fine. However, as I just said that uh, even my percent was low in my bachelor's, it was 67 percent, mm -hmm. uh, 68 percent, sorry. Uh, but uh, there again, I was a rank holder and nobody in my university got above 70 percent. So if we can get a letter from our professor stating the okay. same thing then that would uh, that would manage that uh, also uh, my master's cgpa was 9.13 and as i just said i was a university topper there so uh, anything above 8 cgpa i felt was fine mm. so yeah. so that brings me to the next relevant question which many students ask us that suppose they do not have very good cgpa in the graduation level yes. but they have good uh, cgpa in the masters level uh, will mm -hmm. it be sufficient? I mean, uh, suppose I'm having very poor CGPA, let's like say 6 to uh, 6.5 mm -hmm. and uh, master's is very good, 8 to 8.5. So mm -hmm. will that be sufficient or do they focus a CGPA of your graduation also for admit in a PhD program? Okay, so the, uh, I guess it depends upon the university because mm -hmm. I had my personal experience in this. I mm -hmm. applied to a professor who was really good in his, in his field from Dalhousie University, Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. He accepted me and I got uh, an acceptance letter from his lab uh, in uh, August last year. But then the things were, the, when I was applying to the university, they were not ready to accept my bachelor's CGPA. Mm -hmm. So that is why I ultimately the university didn't accept me because their criteria was uh, I, I was not uh, fitting their minimal criteria but the professor accepted me so that thing I guess uh, is uh, somewhere problematic uh, however in US uh, I didn't face that problem uh, when I stated that I was a rank holder and my rank was again sufficing my um, uh, bachelor's percentage so I didn't face that much problem in USA so I guess that overall the universe it depends from university to university overall so, so do we have some minimum requirement of IELTS score also? You said you've got eight band. So mm -hmm. what band mm -hmm. they should target? I mean, students should target to get admission in good university abroad. I think minimum seven should be there. Even okay. if six, it's six point five, then some universities accept it. Uh, however, mostly universities accept a score that is above seven. Uh, mm -hmm. If they are targeting UK, then there are many universities which accept a score of five point five as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But anything above seven is good. Okay. So, so you also said that uh, GRE was waived off and it was not required in your yes, case. Yes. And that trend we have seen post COVID earlier. Many universities in yes, US, yes, they, yes, they used to ask true. for GRE score. So now students, mm -hmm. uh, they keep on asking that uh, this particular trend that no GRE is required is a very temporary phenomena, or or is it going to be there? I mean, they when they are planning to write, let's say one year down the line, so they will also not uh, write GRE and only on the basis of IELTS they will get it. So, what is your view on that? Uh, yes, uh, prior to COVID, uh, GRE was a must in almost all universities, mm -hmm. all US universities especially. Uh, mm -hmm. However, uh, after COVID, US has particularly waived off GRE. So if there are students who do not want to write GRE, they can focus on countries like uh, 
in none none of the countries in europe is asking for gre in life mm-hmm. sciences and also in canada as well so if they want to they they are particularly adamant that they do not want to write gre then they can focus on these, these countries mm-hmm. however if they are targeting particularly us then gre score would be an added uh, advantage for their cvs so mm-hmm. even if the university is not asking and still they are having a good uh, gre score then their uh, chances of getting into the universities would increase definitely mm-hmm. now such the next question is a kind of you know big debate which is going on in india also as mm-hmm. of now and you know many students mm-hmm. keep on asking us also as mentor that uh, mm-hmm. sir where whether we should go abroad for phd or india because india also has a wonderful institutes mm-hmm. a wonderful professors and infrastructure mm-hmm. why you should go for uh, you know phd for abroad university foreign universities uh, why how, how you can answer this particular question why abroad okay uh, first of all because i think that they pay much more compared to universities in india so um, and also i fully believe that the infrastructure that we are having in universities as as of now in india is uh, comparatively lower to that they are having in abroad so also i feel that the professors uh, over there are a little bit open minded as compared to indian professors over here so yeah that was my okay. reason so yeah. good when when is it they pay better what do you mean by that so maybe that brings me to the next question scholarship what is the typical scholarship a student can get and how much they can save i tell you there are so many uh, students here mm. who always compare once they are in phd they compare themselves with the people who do job yes. so typically yes. you know in india they get uh, 30 35000 in hand and yes, yes. that they have to live also so ultimately mm. saving can't be more than 15k per month and then there are so many people who are to support their families and all so when we when mm. it comes to us doing phd there uh, sakshi i'll ask you a very straight question mm. what yes. is the typical scholarship a student can get and how much they can save what is expenditure if you can tell us something about that okay so uh, getting stipend uh, again depends from university university and also according to the field that the student has chosen uh, in life sciences if i talk about particularly it ranges somewhere from around 25000 dollars per annum to somewhere around $35,000 and this is a typical salary range that i'm telling you uh, i am receiving around $33,500 per year and one of my friend he got into mayo clinic which is one of the best cancer centers and over there he is getting around $42,000 a month so per annum yeah so again i would say that it depends on the university and the institute but general uh, i would say $30,000 in my field yeah we've seen in european especially scandinavian countries that uh, phd where they advertise it as a job and employment they tend to increase the scholarship annual basis the way they do in the employment uh, mm-hmm. do we observe the same trend in us also or if it is fixed as you said 33k it is fixed uh, for per annum for you it is going to be there in next 3 4 years uh, for now they have fixed it i'm not sure if they'll be increasing it later on but right now they have given me a fixed salary mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, how much can we saving? Can you save thousand k per month? Thousand k, yes, I think so. If I'm getting around twenty five hundred dollars uh, in hand, then uh, uh, if I'm spending twelve hundred uh, mm-hmm. on an average, then also I can save thousand dollars. Yes. So do we get tax so, also on this? Thirty three k is a taxable? Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. There will be taxes. So okay. uh, maybe around twenty two hundred, I'll be getting in hand if it's thirty three thousand five hundred dollars and twenty two hundred in hand. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. Section. Now coming to uh, next part uh, mm-hmm. about the duration. Uh, you mentioned a yeah. couple of things. You mentioned uh, salaries or pay is one of the criteria. Mm-hmm. Uh, second criteria which many students talk about is that duration. When we talk about India, you know, the one of the criticism is that uh, duration of the PhD is not fixed. Obviously, it depends mm-hmm. on the student also, but to great extent, ecosystem also. The kind of project mm-hmm. professors have and professors also uh, show the kind mm-hmm. of you know urgency in uh, providing you the PhD within the time. what is the typical duration when you are going to join phd abroad what is in your mind after how many years you are going to complete it what is the okay, duration uh, okay so if i'm talking about life sciences it depends from country to country for instance if somebody is doing phd from europe it will take around 3 to 4 years uh, if somebody is doing phd from canada or or uh, usa they will generally land up finishing their phd in around 5 to 6 years so 5.5 is an average Uh, that i would say from uh, us as well as canada in life sciences so that is in life sciences right yes so when i talk with engineering students they typically tell me 4.5 years 4 or years four. yes 4 yeah. years generally yeah okay okay so that for depends on the domain in which you are going yes for life sciences it's 5.5 years almost everywhere in us 
Hmm. Okay, now coming to uh, Sakshi after uh, PhD, uh, is there anything in your mind once you complete your PhD, what you are going to do? You are going to join academics, you are going to do your postdoctoral fellowship, you are going to do hmm. your uh, in, in industrial job there. So, what is in your mind uh, after PhD, what you are going to do? Yeah, so as of now, I plan to go for a postdoctorate after my PhD. So, I'm hmm. quite stuck on that. After hmm. my postdoctorate, I would like to prefer academia mostly. Hmm. And, and what are the typical opportunities you are going to get there and what are the typical career opportunities there like in terms of if you join a, a position of teacher there or a, a professor there what is the kind of salary structure and all like we know in India how it is there after PhD what is going to be the career uh, you know if you do from there. Yeah, so first of all, there are many institutes which are related to universities. For mm -hmm. instance, uh, University of South Florida, in, in which I have recently uh, got admit from, uh, there is a MOFIT Cancer Center, which is again among the top cancer centers in USA. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can join that institute as a scientist if I don't want to become a professor. So uh, there are several institutes which are affiliated to universities and uh, I can go and maybe join them as a scientist. Uh, or I can become a professor or I can join an industry. So uh, there are several options yeah, after PhD or okay. postdoctorate. So, so we, we have two options here. One, uh, we can do PhD after master's the way you are doing. Mm -hmm. We have option like uh, immediately after graduation, we can uh, go for direct yes. PhD. Mm -hmm. uh, in India, we see that not many students are aware about the second option. Like after mm -hmm. graduation, they can go directly for PhD or maybe they don't believe that they're ready for that. What is your take on that, uh, on these two options? Okay, uh, yes. So I was also uh, looking for this option after my bachelor's. Uh, but there was one thing which I got to know that uh, 16 years of education is something which they require in US. So if you are having a B.Tech degree, which is a four-year bachelor's, then you, can go for a, uh, th then you can go for a PhD. But again, if you are having a three-year bachelor's, then you will require a master's. So that is why I had to go for a master's during that time. So that is something which people are not aware of during their mm -hmm. bachelor's. So if, yeah. But if somebody has done master's of science, MSc physics, MSc chemistry, mm -hmm. MSc biology, which is five years course, you know, after mm -hmm. grad, uh, 12th class, yes. so yeah. that completes, that makes it, uh, I think, 17 years. So and yes. after MSc, yes. you need not to go for MTech in India and then go for PhD abroad, right? You can directly go yeah, for yeah. PhD. No, yeah, then they can directly go for PhD. You can directly pursue that. Okay, Sakshi, now why US? But after uh, BSc. Okay. But after BSc, the only they cannot go. They yeah, I have BSc to. Uh, they have to go for B Tech. Hmm. Uh, but if suppose they BSc, BSc is or uh, with honors or something at four years course. Now, as we know in the new educational policy, you know they made these kind of provisions. Then they can go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they can go. Yes. Okay, Sakshi, my next question was related to US. Now, why you decided mm -hmm. to go for US and why not Europe, or did you explore opportunities in Europe also? Uh, uh, okay, so I wrote to a couple of professors in Europe. Also, mm -hmm. uh, there are sites like Find a PhD, Euro Access, Scholarship DB, and so on. I applied for a couple of positions over there. However, my main focus was US and Canada, preferably. Uh, in Canada, I wrote to a couple of professors and I got into uh, two or three universities, uh, two universities over there. But then uh, again, I waited for some time because uh, I wanted to go into US. So uh, in this uh, October around, I started up planning my application for that and I applied in US because I feel that my career options which will, will be much more as compared to that of Europe and if I'm doing my PhD in USA, that's why. Okay, so there is your individual choice and uh, many other factors yes. maybe, which, yeah, wonderful. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Sakshi, that uh, brings us to an end of this wonderful, uh, you know, uh, session in which uh, I asked so many queries and yes. I'm thankful to you. You gave very, very precise and concise answer to each one of my points. Now, now any message which you have for the bio students who are listening to you? Okay, uh, so first of all, I would like to say that they need to plan, uh, start planning things uh, right from the start itself. Uh, also, uh, one thing is that uh, they should be focused on which sector they want to do their PhD from. Yeah. For instance, uh, I what now I feel is maybe I would have got to a much better university if I had some experience in immunology particularly. Uh, but still, uh, uh, so if they're having uh, research experience uh, in that particular field, they will be getting uh, in um, PhD in much better universities. So that I will say research experience is very important in getting a good university for PhD. Mm. So so is there any specific way to catch professor also? 
the way you said you should plan and then accordingly go hmm. yeah so there were two ways first of all i looked for research papers and then uh, after looking at research papers then only i decided which professors i have to write emails to uh, secondly uh, one thing was i targeted universities uh, the universities that were good in my field uh, and then i looked at which professors were publishing more and uh, the professors that were actively publishing uh, i wrote mails to them so these two ways i preferred for looking for professors okay wonderful so when are you going to join now sakshi when is your phd starting in us yeah yeah so i'll be going over there preferably before 16th of august okay so it starts in august only yeah. yeah 19th august is the starting date for my okay okay course, yeah. So that brings us to an end of this wonderful session, Sakshi. Let me yeah. let me uh, thank you uh, for the time which you spared. And I'm very yeah. sure the information which came from your side will be very, very valuable and helpful to students, especially uh, students of biology who wants to pursue a career in that direction. And uh, we wish you all the very best for your PhD abroad. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you so much. Yeah.